I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Listen, you're here this morning, you struggle with your salvation. Did God really save me when I asked Him to? Friend, the real question is, did you really ask Him? Not did He really save you? Because the promise is, is as we're learning in our covenants this morning, the promise is not conditional on us. It is a covenant that God made that whosoever will call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so if you say, God, I want to be saved, I'm asking you to save me because of what Jesus did. I want the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I want the position as a child of God. I want to be heirs together with Jesus. I want to have the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God, I want to be saved. Then that is where grace comes in. God gives you something that is unmerited, undeserved, something that you do not have any kind of a reason at all to have, that you do not have any kind of a, of a means to uh, earn. It is something that is just by faith. And faith is I want to be saved. I'm telling you, you want to give the gospel to somebody, don't complicate it. Oh, when you get saved, you're going to have to understand that you're going to need to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And you're going to lose all your friends. And you're going to have to make a decision to separate from your family. And you're going to have to give up all of your addictions. And you're going to have to... No, friend, what you're going to have to do is come to Jesus by faith. Say, God, I want to be saved. I want your grace. I'll tell you something. God will give you grace to do a bunch of that other stuff. But you can't do it. Because if you do in order to be saved, it's filthy rags. You are saying, God, I'm good enough to save and so you should save me because I'm good enough, not because of Jesus Christ's righteousness. And Paul said, Peter, you've corrupted the gospel. Peter, you've messed with the gospel. You've, you're in error. He, he says, um, I saw thee walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. In verse 14, you know the doctrinal error always is, has application with the gospel? Almost all doctrinal error has something to do with the gospel and what it is. Doctrinal error misdefines the gospel. You say, Pastor, I don't know if that's true or not. Hey, I'll tell you something. Look it up. Just, just think of a doctrinal heresy. Think of one, and then tell me what that heresy teaches about the gospel, and you'll find that doctrinal error always has to do with the gospel. And Peter is saved. There's no question about that at all. He's a brother. He's, he's a good Christian. By the way, he's a good enough Christian to get right about it and say, beloved brother Paul, and to say uh, hey, some things that Paul understands are kind of deep. Peter got it here. He got it because of God's grace. That's the way our salvation is. Friend, you're not bringing any good works to Jesus. You're not bringing any kind of righteousness. You're not bringing any kind of earning, anything that can be earned, anything that can be merited. I'm telling you, grace and salvation is undeserved. And the very idea of grace is undeserved, unmerited. And if you get saved, it'll be because you asked God to do it and because God was gracious. We have kind of sometimes got high views of ourselves with regard to our position in Jesus Christ. Positionally, I want to tell you something. I'm mighty important. Positionally, as far as God is concerned, my friend, I'm perfect. I mean that. That's what the Bible teaches. I'm justified. And so when somebody messes with me, I'll tell you what they're doing. They're messing with someone God loves. But I'll tell you, with, this, with regard to what I am and what I deserve and what I've earned, I'm a worm. I'm a lowly worm. I deserve hell. I'm lousy. And so what I am is by the grace of God. That's when Paul says, but by, he says, I'm the chiefest of sinners, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the way, that's a relief statement. That's a, whew, wow. <laughs> this is not, I, I did, Paul said, I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I was a Benjamin. I was a, he goes down the list and he says, whew, but for the grace of God, but for the grace of God. And Christian, that's what we're saved by, God's grace. And, I, and if I can't make any plainer to you today, I just want to tell you something. There's nothing you can do to deserve grace. There's nothing you can do to deserve grace, but grace is unconditionally offered to you. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are today. You say, Pastor, I've been, I'm, I'm telling you, and Paul said he was the chiefest of sinners, but it's because he didn't really know about me. It's because I wasn't, I wasn't born yet. And if he'd seen me, he'd have known. No, Paul understood that his righteousness made him wicked. Many times we're self-righteous about our sin. And we try to act as though we're so good that we wouldn't trust Jesus to be our Savior because God would get a bad deal or something like that. Friend, that's just arrogant. You think that there's merit in your being saved. You think that there's something you can do to earn it or deserve it. And I want to tell you something. You can't.